Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, I'm Christina from Leafy Lester and today I want to talk to you about fungal infection on your houseplants and I want to help you treat them or at least identify them. So since I'm affected myself, well not me but my fern leaf cactus is, here I have my Zelenitzerius chrysocardium and this baby has an issue. I got this baby in winter and after receiving it I immediately noticed some dark spots on the leaves and also it had a certain smell to it and since I work in a lab I'm kind of familiar with the smell of bacteria and fungus and I thought hmm, this was already very sus but I decided to cut off all the ugly parts and the infected parts and then I also propagated them and all the new growth on the mother plant and also on the propagation looked really healthy. Case closed, goes busted. No issues at all. We are all fine. Everything is good. Well, how wrong I was. <laughs> Come springtime, warmer temperatures, a more frequent watering schedule. And one day I woke up to the same smell I noticed in the beginning. And I already knew, okay, something's wrong. Gotta check the leaves. To my surprise, all of the new growth was littered. It was littered in like yellow spots and, and brown spots. It basically came overnight and it really stinks so it got a little bit better now but it's not a pleasant smell. Moving on. As every good plant parent I started researching on the internet what could be the problem. This led me to a website called Tasty Landscapes, don't laugh, and there I found the name of the fungus. The pictures that I found there were pretty similar and this name then led me to another website called dragonfruitnetwork.org. There I found even more resources on this. I will have to read this. Botryosphaeria dotidea. This is a fungus that um, infects all different kinds of plants. It can affect uh, grapevines, sequoia trees and all different kind of epiphyllums. So this cacti for example as well fits kind of the scheme. Thank god it's just a fungus because I believe treating bacteria is a little bit more difficult than treating a fungus. So at least that's good, right? Let's go through the symptoms of this disease. So it starts out as like little yellow spots littered all over the leaves and the stem. Some leaves are more severely affected, some are less infected. And these spots are slightly swollen so they can make a little bump on your leaf or an indentation depends on the state of the disease. And if they like burst or if they die off, they like dry and become really black. They seem to be filled with kind of liquid. I would not recommend bursting it because it probably spreads the fungus even more. So just leave it. It's not nice. And it stinks. It really smells. If everything that's like affected dies off, it won't look good. Because if you look at those leaves, they are covered in it. So if everything dies off, basically the whole leaf a looks like shit, B dies, so I need to treat it ASAP and that's what we are going to do. Let's talk about causes really quick. The website that I found stated that this disease occurs a lot of the times in dragon fruit or pitaya. Surprisingly, a, I think it's part of the Selenitzerus family as well, so it's also like a epiphyllum. If you find a plant that is infected with this fungus, then first off isolate it, don't um, water them together like in a shower or something, just keep it separate. And this brings me to my next point, this disease is carried through water. Guess who showered this plant lately because uh, it was really dusty, the winter was over and I wanted to clean the leaves. Um, well done, Christina, well done. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. One more very common cause to spread this disease is unclean tools. So if you have scissors or she pruning shears, whatever, uh, and you cut this plant and did not sanitize it afterwards, well, it will spread. So this is a reminder for all of us to clean our tools in between propagation. Another thing about the spreading of this disease in cold weather and dry seasons, so no rain or not a lot of watering, this disease spreads less quickly. In warm temperatures, 
and more rain or more watering, maybe even showering, uh, this disease explodes, which fits my story pretty well because I got it in winter, it did not do much then, but now that it's getting warmer and I water it more frequently, the disease exploded basically. Let's come to the most interesting part, which is treatment. So, first off, there are home remedies that are supposed to help, like baking soda spray, um, soap solutions. I read something about 3% neem oil. I am not really trusting all of that. You can try if you don't have anything else. On the other hand, there are fungicidal sprays or solutions that you can buy um, that have chemicals that work either on the outside, so it's just a coating of the spray, or something that is systemic and really works from the inside. The plant takes up these um, chemicals and then it's distributed all over the plant. So doesn't matter where the fungus is on the plant, the chemical will get to it. At this point, you can also help the plant with supplemental nutrition or the right nutrition. As you know, plants need certain nutrients in their soil or in fertilizer to like build up their plant tissue, like cell walls and other stuff. So if they are well fed, then they will be stronger and more resilient to diseases. Now let's go on to the actual treatment of this plant. I went to the garden center yesterday and I asked the employee to recommend me something against uh, fungus on houseplants. He recommended me this stuff from Zola Biol. It's universal against all kinds of fungus. So I hope this includes the one that I have. This is how it looks. You get a little bottle. Oh, one more important thing. Uh, this bottle has like warning signs on the back. You should always read what they state on the packet. Use gloves, spray outside, etc, etc. Just be safe. The active chemical in this stuff is called azoxystrobin and it's supposed to um, prevent more spread of the fungus and also is supposed to treat the fungus that already exists. Okay, in here I have a liquid solution, so I will just use what the supplier states on this bottle and dilute it accordingly and then spray it all over my plant. So let's go. Well, I took you a little bit closer. Um, I got uh, 750 milliliters of water. We have our little bottle with the concentrate. I'm going to open this, try to show you how it looks. And then you get a little cup. I calculated for 750 milliliters. I will use 0.6 milliliters of the solution. So I'm trying to do this with this little cup here. I think I got approximately 0.6. So I'm going to dump it in. In this bottle we have 15 milliliters so you can treat a lot of plants with this if you're just using it for inside but you can also use it on tomato and cucumber maybe in your garden or on your balcony and it's not hurting bees <laughs> we got our solution right here okay and this is our finished solution i will now put it into this spray bottle and since we are not supposed to breathe this stuff in, I will go outside and spray it on my balcony. Welcome to the ASMR portion of this video. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. All done. We have our treated patient right here. I will now monitor how it goes, if it spreads further, if the fungicidal spray maybe affects the plant as well. We will see. And you will see the results in 3, 2, 1, 0! Hello, future Christina here. We have our patient and uh, I have observed it closely in the last two weeks since it was treated with the fungicide. And what I can say, one is that the plant does not seem to be affected by the fungicide itself. So everything looks completely normal. No damage to the plant tissue just because of the fungicide. The 
active spots on fungus that were visible on the leaves have dried out so um, I have a lot more of these dark brown dried out spots which I believe is a sign that the fungus on this spot is dying or has died and therefore dried out. Most notably I would say is that all the new growth in the last two weeks is not affected yet or hopefully won't be in the future as well. All the new growth um, has no signs of the fungus. Since we learned that the new growth is most vulnerable to the fungus, this gives me a lot of hope that the treatment worked. I will definitely let you know if anything changes or if it will spread um, in the future, then I will make a follow-up video. I hope now you can identify the issue with your plant and treat it properly. Since this is my first time, experiencing fungus infection on my houseplants and treating them. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience. If you have already successfully treated some of your houseplants, maybe let me know in the comments what you used and how well it worked. I would be really keen on reading that. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and maybe lightly smash the subscribe button. I would very much appreciate it. And until next time, enjoy your plants and I'll see you then. Bye!